welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm Jean Shafiroff, your host, and today with us is Chris Birch. He is an extraordinary business person and also an extraordinary philanthropist. Specifically today, we are going to discuss his involvement with the Lang Lang Music International Foundation. Chris, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, I guess I'll start a little bit, you know, when I was, I lived outside of Philadelphia, my parents were awesome, kind of upper middle class, and uh, I was, I would say I was the biggest problem child you ever met, like uh, F's, D's, bedwetting, um, everything from, I'd stay in the closet, listen to talk radio, and finally my parents sent me away to a prep school in New England, and I was able to get straight F's and D's, so <laughs> lucky for me, I was somewhat of an athlete, and I got into some college and university, and I guess at that point I, I realized that the, you know that I was very entrepreneurial, and I really, 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 really wanted to make a lot of money and to impact the world. But you know, back then we didn't really think about impacting the world. We actually thought about how are you going to survive. So I started a sweater business, and I'd go to a sweater mill up in Massachusetts with my friends, and we'd buy sweaters, and then I would go back and sell them to all the girls in the campuses. So we go door to door. And we go, you know, beautiful young women, and we go, would you like to buy a sweater? And we would pay $10 for them and sell them for 20 And while I was doing that my whole, whole life, I was like, this is really fun. And we had, I ran the, at Ithaca College, I ran the concession stands for the football games, and I had pinballs in the sororities. And then I was in, in Scotland, and I was in my last year of college university at Ithaca, based in London, and, I went to a sweater manufacturer. And so now wait, let me just stop you. So you actually started this business while you were in a college and and I understand you while you were in college you had something like 60 stores. So No, 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 we didn't have any stores in college. Not back no, then. No, when I was in college, But no. you were selling from college to college. Yes, I would go from college to college and I would have other students sell for me and everything else. So in college, I made back then ten thousand dollars in a year, which was a tremendous amount of money, and um, was able to save up and start my business. When I got um, instead of going to work for a company, and back then everyone wanted you to go to work for Procter and Gamble or a bank or everything else, and I said, "Look, I just want to take a chance." And my brother Bob and I built this sweater company. Interesting, and and really then fun. And then later on, you got involved with your wife, Tori Birch, yeah. and started um, a, a massive multi-billion yeah. dollar yeah. company, and yeah. which everyone finds so fascinating. Yeah. And what was the story behind that? Was this a, something where the two of you collaborated together? She created the fashion side, and you created the business side, or was this something that you did together? Because I find it so interesting. And then. And then you've always been involved in philanthropy, and yeah. um, and we're here to speak about the Lang yeah, Lang um, in that's International what, that's Music yeah. Program. But before we get there, can you tell me a little bit about that sure. business, which so, is, I think, so really after, interesting. After I had run my business uh, for 20 years, uh, my brother and I, and we sold it to a Swire Group in Cathay. And then I went off to do other really fun things, investing in great companies, the Faena Hotel, and. Voss Water and a number of things. And then Tori and I got married, amazing woman. And she had been working at, you know, at a very high level at some of the biggest fashion companies in the world, Ralph and Vera Wang and everything else. And she goes, I'd like to start my own line. And I'm like, Tori, this is a really tough business. You know, do we want to do it? So we were a team. Um, I had a lot of experience in production, merchandising design, you know, that was my creative thing. And Tori certainly understood marketing, has incredible taste. Agreed. And we, we decided to start the store together, and we were partners. And we had another woman, Fiona Couture, that helped in the beginning, who was awesome. And Tori, we designed, and I think mostly Tori, obviously, she's very talented, designed a line. And the first day we opened the store, um, every piece sold out. And Amazing. And then we worked as a team for about seven years together and worked really well. I mean, we're very different. Um, but she's got some of the best taste level in the world. She's an incredible mother. And, you know, obviously we went through a divorce and you go through those things. And I think it was just best that I went my own way and she went her way. And she's great. And the company is a, a very large, very successful company. 
Um, I think that her, her, and Alan, her, her husband, they've got a great team. He's the CEO. He's unbelievable. And Tori's the CEO, but they're great. We're very good friends. I'm not involved at all day to day in the company. I own a small piece, but really I have to say that they've built an extraordinary, um, the group there and Tori. And back real quickly, which I think is so interesting about philanthropy, I know from the very beginning, um, Tori and that team really wants to give back. And you know, they give back to yes. women, they give back to different charities, they're very involved. They're very much about that, that charity giving and that came part of the ethos of the business from the beginning. Yes, I, and I've been to many charity events where Tori is present and yeah. uh, she's a lovely woman. I've met her yeah. a number of times and really it's, it's such an amazing success story. Nice. And, and, and then the, now we're here for the Lang Lang right. International Music right. um, uh, Program or, or the foundation. Right. And um, uh, for those of our viewers who don't know anything about who, who Lang Lang is, would you tell our, our viewers a little bit about, well, who is Lang Lang? I know who he is. He's this fantastic concert pianist. But tell us a little bit more, because I, I find it so intriguing and fascinating what he did for students around the United States. But who is Lang Lang? So Lang Lang is a, one of the warmest, kindest, most important giving people that I've met. He has created this charity with extraordinary care and understanding. He is a concert pianist of unbelievable proportion, but he's not your typical concert pianist. He's about collaboration. He's about, he's about uh, everything. And you know, he grew up as a very, very poor child. And when he was a child, he really, really wanted to give back. And he wanted to give back to kids because music is so important. And here's one of the most famous musicians around the world. He supports a charity with his own money, he gives his own money. He has, he has amazing people around him, and he has built one of the, what I think is the great future charity, and I feel honored actually to know him and to work with him and to hopefully help to build this into to a larger global charity. Yes, and so I've met Lang Lang a number of times, and I've had the opportunity to listen to his music, and his music is really spectacular. And I was reading on the internet that he actually gave his first concert in China before the age of five. So we're talking about someone like Mozart, yeah. who is a genius, yeah. a musical genius at a very young age. The other thing that I was so impressed with about Lang Lang was his beautiful personality and his beautiful soul, his interest in mankind, and a real philanthropist. So. Here we have Lang Lang, someone who grew up in China and has come to the United States and built a foundation to help children in America, correct? He has um, amazing. He has um, programs in how many schools across the United well, States? Well, there's 60 schools. Amazing. All very underprivileged schools. Kids, kids that really are, we don't pick the fancy schools, whatever. He tries to pick the schools where we need it. We're part of the program, of the school program, and you can imagine how, how, how difficult that is uh, to get within the curriculum, fully funded by the foundation. Um, and it's just amazing what it does for these kids. Thousands and thousands of students have gone through the program. And it's, it's just amazing. And how did you get involved? Did you grow up in a musical house? I personally, my father was a music teacher who had studied at Juilliard, and so in my house, we had constant classical music, all sorts of music we were listening to all the time. And then I studied a piano for eight years. And then in the eighth grade, I decided I wanted my cheerleading and gymnastics more than the piano. But did you grow up in a musical home? And was this something, did music mean something to you? Tell me, because <laughs> to me, music well, is everything. But well, I want to hear I you. actually am deprived, you know. I grew up in a family with a bunch of brothers, rough house. My dad came back from the war. My mom, I don't. I think we had a record player. Uh, I don't know. Zero music in my life. Uh, actually, listened to talk radio. Uh, really, even to this day, music is not that important in my life. And I realized that 
when I listened to Lang Lang and I got involved, I realized, you know, that's a part of my life that I miss. And I wish that I had had what this, what, what the foundation does is it gives young impoverished kids and kids that are really wonderful kids from all walks of life, gives them self-esteem, it gives them discipline, it gives them happiness. The piano is an amazing thing. And so I'm probably the last person that should be involved in a charity like this, dead last. Um, but it's when I see what the charity does, I see what the lives of the kids, and I wish upon a star, I wish, I wish, I wish that I had had the, the, the ability, or my parents love music. And so I, I feel really good about being involved and, and hopefully help to raise a lot of money around the world, and, and it's exciting. It's a beautiful story because you were really deprived of a musical household and, and or so you seem to allude to. Not, I'm sure you grew up in a wonderful uh, family situation, but um, that you got involved with this because you wanted to give uh, children something that you didn't have growing up. And then Lang Lang, who grew up, you mentioned, very impoverished, wanted to reach out to children who didn't have the same opportunity and help them and that's really a beautiful thing and that's really what philanthropy is all about and you know you could have chosen pretty much anything and you chose the Lang Lang um, yeah. a mus International Music um, yeah. Foundation and so this this must be very near and dear to your heart and then and then I, I, I saw that Alec Baldwin was involved with your big event this past November at Lincoln Center. And um, tell me what that was like. I, I remember receiving an invitation, but that night I couldn't go. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but I, I'm involved with many charities. And I have so many conflicts. Oh, but, I know. Um, and, well, Alec, but, Alec, I think, um, and um, Alec is is an amazing um, an, an amazing philanthropist. Gives of his time every year to the event. Uh, wherever he is in the world, he gets there, he does it for free, he does the auction. And not only is he amazing, um, um, Lucas, who runs this foundation, is like one of my heroes. He's an extraordinarily giver of time and talent and a former musician himself. And you have these great people like with every charity that give and everything. Then you have this big event. And the event is really spectacular. And the first time I went to the event, I was sitting next to Wycliffe John, who Hi. is now going to become my partner, who's an amazing human, and who is one of the most ph philanthropic people that I've ever met. And he gives 20000 of his own money not only does he play, and not only does he give, but he gives mm -hmm. to the foundation. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes, you know, when you see that kind of group of people in a room, and they're not really just there because of a party, they're there because they care. And I was just like, wow. And when they asked me on the board, I was honored, and then they asked me to chair the board, and I'm like, there's no hokey pokey about this. This is really about helping kids, mm -hmm. and they really do a great job mm -hmm. with dispersing the money. So I just, think when you see these little students and you see how beautiful they are and they get up there and play on the piano and they've come to my own personal house, you just say like, this is what life's about. And I think, and you know, that we live in a time right now where everyone's looking for more meaning in their life. And if you're fortunate to be able to give back, and I think a lot of people of means want to give back, this is really a good time. And I think your show is extraordinary because this is a time where we can really get back and really care and really get involved. I agree. It's, it's, it's just amazing. incredibly important. And uh, for our viewers, I am with uh, Chris Birch. Um, and the subject is the Lang Lang International Music Foundation, which is a charity that has programs across the United States in schools, music programs, and children are uh, children who may not have the opportunity to receive piano lessons or receiving piano lessons, they are coming together. Um, this is all headed by Lang Lang, a concert pianist uh, from China. And Chris Birch has, has gotten very involved. He's now their board president and really doing some extraordinary things. And I understand Sandy Weil and his wife have been involved and many other people in this charity. And 
Are you planning to expand internationally into other countries? That would be something that would really be extraordinary. Yeah, I've, I've only, Sandy was, unfortunately, he, as, as, uh, he, he is still on the board, he's amazing. He and his wife have been just extraordinary to the foundation. And I'm so happy that I get the opportunity. And I think there's something really important for everyone. Here's Lang Lang from China, and he loves this country so much. And he's one of the most, literally in China, he's the most famous person. If you walk around, like, fills stadiums, fills everything. And look where his charity started in the United States to give back to American kids. So, you know, as we go through this thing in life, it's like, he's a beautiful man, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful charity. And now, I said to Lang Lang, I said, if I want to take on this role, I want to expand this to all students around the world, all different nations, everything. And how can we bring music to a village in Africa? And how can we bring music all over the world? And how can we get maybe people that are looking at this to be involved with us? Because it's real, right? And it gives discipline, it gives hope. Can you imagine you're a child in Indonesia and you're sitting down and you have the chance to play the piano for the first time? It's and it makes you understand. It's mm -hmm. extraordinary mm -hmm. what, this, what this guy's done. And uh, it's exciting. We're initiating a lot of new programs. We're, we're um, donating electro electronic pianos uh, for our students. We don't want to let that out yet, but we're, we're doing a lot of things. And so we want to be innovative, disruptive, and extraordinary. And uh, Chris, for those of our watchers who want to donate, what is the website? Oh, langlangfoundation.org would be wonderful. Langlangfoundation.org. And do you accept small donations? Any, any donation oh, we'd accept. Thank you. It's just a, it's just a five dollars, a dollar, five million dollars, whatever you would like to give. This is an incredible foundation. So just impressed. thank you so much for having me. Going back to Lang Lang, where is he now? Is he here so in this country, China. or he's in China now? He's in now. China, um, doing a lot of, a lot of work in studio, in in house, mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. things. He's on talk shows over there, and and he, he's actually, I think, in a way, the best ambassador to China for us because he's part. You know, obviously, grew up in China, loves China, but he's he's over there right now. Yes, and is he coming back for a concert yes, in it, November? Or uh, are you I, we don't know yet. It? I think no. everything is up in the air given the COVID yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But um, he came to my house uh, about two summers ago, and he performed with one arm. You know, this is a guy that you can imagine he had his arm he really bad. He hurt his bad. tendons or something yeah, because and he I was there play. that night, and, and it was fantastic. Yeah, and he played with one hand. Yeah. We were the first concert he played with one hand. He had the Young Scholars, which is our program, Remember. which is mm -hmm. so amazing. And then that last year, we at, we at my house, we had all the young students play. And it's just great to see him. You know, it's just Yes, great. he's done a lot, and you've done a lot. And um, the children, I think this is all about bringing in the next generation, providing for the next generation in this country and then in other countries, which you're going to move into, I'm, I'm oh, yeah, assuming, really yes, and you know, when you change a child's life and you bring a child forward, you, it doesn't, one thing is your own children, but to help the children of others, children you may never see, I consider that a great and a, the highest form of philanthropy, and all of us can be acting philanthropists. For those of us who don't have the money to give, we can always give our time and our knowledge and never think that you don't have anything to offer. And are you accepting volunteers to I think, help? Yeah, we do have a volunteer mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and, and we'd love to, anyone would like to volunteer. We, we usually do a, a big event, which is our big fundraiser every two years, which is extraordinary. So we, we're, we're a small and a young organization, um, so every dollar really goes back to the kids. But yes, we take volunteers, and, and some of you have means. I think there's so many charities out there, and I know that every one of you every day has asked the question, please give to this or give to the United Way, and they're all great. They're all wonderful, and look, we're a society that knows how to give. You know, you go to other societies, they don't really give, but I think if uh, anyone would like to give a small donation, 
would accept anything or be involved, it would, you know, would be great. And I think we're also fun. Well, and because collectively I'd, the small donations create massive change. So if, if, if you can't give $1,000, you can give $50 or $25. And collectively all of these donations can change a life. And, and so you now getting back to Lang Lang, what I find so extraordinary is here is a man who grew up in China. He's a fabulously famous concert pianist, extremely talented. And he came to the United States to do something for the people of the United States. And that's really an extraordinary thing. And that shows not only someone who cares about the people only in his country, but he cares about the people outside of his country, outside of his comfort zone. And that's I think that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful he's so thing. It's, and it's just he's a rare, kind, right? kind human being. And Chris, so are you to get involved uh -huh. in this Thank and you. to help. And I mean, we are here for a very short time, all of us. And Chris, you've been a very, very successful businessman. You've had many, you have six children from what I've read and, and you've had everything. And so instead of spending your time on a yacht all day long or playing golf, you got involved in philanthropy. And I believe that anyone who is of means, we all have a responsibility because life is not fair. Life, people, people come into this world, some are, grow up with a lot of money, but most of us grow up either middle class or at or below the poverty level. And those of us who've achieved some success, we have a responsibility. And you are a prime example of a man who's taken a fabulously successful career. You're a brander. We didn't get into that, but you've had many different businesses. And here you've taken oh, your business acumen, your ability to understand business, and you've You've, you've given it to philanthropy, and this is all volunteer time. And I, I really have to say, oh, I have to say you've done some really wonderful oh, things. Yeah, and, and, and now getting back to the foundation, so can you give a few examples of some of the children that you help, oh. some of the little, uh, to see their faces, I'm sure must be so uplifting and, and really life-changing to see that you've really change the life of a child. Can I give you like one thing I think is my regret? Yes. So my regret actually is uh, that I didn't, when I was younger, and I had young kids and a family, I should have given more back. And now as I get older, I want to give back all the time. So I think a lot of younger kids today are really great and they know their parents are helping, but that's what we would love anyone that's of any age to get involved in this and, and helping these young kids play. It would be wonderful. And some of the kids from very underprivileged families that learn to play piano for the first time, their mom, single mom, single family, works two jobs. And just think of the joy they have to have an extracurricular activity. And we've seen so many of our children go on to our young scholar programs from families and you see them playing at 17 years old and going to Juilliard and everything else. And you know this foundation has changed their life. And in a time in a world where we're feeling very disruptive, whether it's about COVID sure. or whether it's mm -hmm. about the inequalities of mm -hmm. life, little steps, little seeds that we can plant in a child's life is important. And for me, I, I care most about the children. You know, I care a lot. And I care about these young kids that sit at home. I agree. And they have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. And Especially now in now. every 60 public schools, and you can't understand the politics involved in that, We've instilled a, a program which is so beautiful where they get to hear music, feel music, and grow on, and some of my hope will be the most famous pianists in the world. So I think it's great. We have Asian children. We have um, young, young kids of every race that um, are so part important. of our things. But one thing is we like to go to schools that really want to be part of the program. And that, and that relish yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, philanthropy is something that we can all engage in and remember we all have something to offer and 
to train your children to become acting philanthropists is so important. I always say that philanthropy is something that needs to be taught in the schools and then if the parents are involved, then the children get involved. Sometimes it's the reverse and the children teach the parents to get involved in philanthropy. The key is though during this terrible pandemic that we're all living through, we must work to help one another and Chris Birch, thank you very thank much you. for being a guest. And Lang Lang, I don't think you're watching this, but if you have the opportunity to watch this show, I just want to thank you very much for what you have done for so many children in the United States. You have opened up their lives to music, given them the opportunity to learn a little bit about music and to play the piano. I can't thank you enough. And so, Chris, thank you thank very you. much for joining what us. A, what, and, a what a beautiful show. Well, thank you. And we try. You and know, you're we, planting the seeds <laughs> of tomorrow's generation. Well, and so it's are you. Really, and it's, it's really it's, great. Thank it's, you. You know, we all work together. So uh, thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the summer. Stay safe. And to all our watchers, thank you for tuning in today. And remember uh, three things going forward. We have to wear a mask. We have to social distance, and then we have to keep washing our hands, and we will get through this pandemic. Thank you all, and see you next time.